So you're thinking about taking the plunge and switching over to Linux. Well, don't erase that hard drive yet. There may be a few things you want to consider, and we're going to discuss that today on Spatry's Cup of Linux. First, let me start by saying that I've got well over 20 years of computing experience, and most of that experience stems from using Microsoft products. And in many ways, uh, Microsoft Windows, and I've been through every version that you can think of, has met or sometimes fell short of my expectations. And then earlier this year, I decided to switch to Linux because not only did it meet my expectations, it actually exceeded them. But it has been a rocky ride. Over the years, I tried many different Linux distributions, and I maybe I had one piece of hardware that didn't work, and it was kind of a deal breaker for me, and that sort of thing. But the Linux kernel has matured, and so have I, and I found that Linux now supports a lot of hardware, and uh, it and it does so many things that Windows just isn't capable of. But before switching to Linux, you may want to make a few considerations. And the first consideration is that if you like to solve problems, if you're a good troubleshooter and problem solver, if you have some patience, then Linux is waiting for you. Unfortunately, uh, Linux does require a little bit of effort on your part. If I could make, you know, uh, if I could describe it this way, picture, if you will, there are several different types of vehicles on the road. You have cars with an automatic transmission, and let's say the car with the automatic transmission is Windows, and then, of course, uh, you have Macintosh. That's like driving a car with a stick shift. And then, of course, you have Linux, and that is like operating a motorcycle. Now, each of these three vehicles have different ways of operating them. They all perform the same exact function, but the thing is, there are different approaches to getting things done. If you, and I can tell you, when I started using Linux and I decided to switch this time around, there were a number of issues that I ran into. But the thing is, I had the patience to go through the forms and find out what they were. I was so used to doing everything in Windows that I just automatically assumed I would be able to figure out how to change this or change that the way I did in Windows. And this is not so. That being said, it is always good to make good use of the forms. Another consideration that you should make is before making that plunge, I highly recommend that you download and try several different Linux distributions. Now, recordable disks have become really cheap price. I mean, we're talking less than a dime a piece for, for a burnable DVD. And there are many distributions to choose from. If you're new to Linux, I highly recommend that you consider trying Linux Mint. Zorin or Pinguy OS, which is powering my desktop here. And uh, I like the Pinguy OS because it is user friendly and there is it's versatile and there's so much you can do with it. And this is why I created a whole series on this and I take you step by step through installation, configuring software, and most of the things that, that, that you would want to know. Now, when I switched to Linux, I dual booted my computer. I was running, I was running um, Windows 7, and I was using Linux Mint. Now, and the the thing that I that really surprised me the most was not only did it did Linux configure all of my hardware without any drivers, but it was also working on the slower part of the disk. Picture, if you will, this is a hard drive, and on the outer sectors, 
the, the outer sectors of the disc actually read faster than the interior tracks. And I had Windows on the outer tracks and Linux on the inner tracks. And Linux actually outperformed Windows. It actually ran faster. And as a matter of fact, when I got this computer, it only had two gigs of RAM. It's a 233 megahertz computer. And it was incredibly slow. Even with Windows 7 Home Edition installed on this, a fresh, uh, a fresh factory installed computer, it was still slow. And yet Linux was running very fast. And uh, much to my surprise, things really improved by the time I upgraded this thing to 8 gigs of RAM and I maxed it out. But what I did was I did dual boot my system because there were some programs that I just could not live without. But the beauty of this is I found this website. And this is called, let me uh, zoom in on this for you so you can see it better. This is linuxalt.com. And on this page, I found a number of alternatives to programs that I already use that already come with many Linux distributions. And if it isn't already pre-installed, when you install Linux, you can easily get these applications through the Ubuntu Software Center or the Synaptic Package Manager. Additionally, you can download PPAs and add them to your sources so that you can get these programs continuously updated fresh every time you use them. And as you can see here, there is a large list of programs. I am willing to bet if there is a piece of software that you use regularly, there is a Linux alternative that is free and open source and is very easy to use. Surprisingly, it will also have the it would also have the user friendliness that you would come to expect in Windows software. You would still be able to navigate through the program much the same way. So you can see there is a lot of programs here. And the thing that surprised me was the fact that these programs are really good and they didn't take much time for me to learn. But I am a software guru. Complicated programs don't take me very long to figure out, but for some other people, there's going to be a learning curve, and Linux in general does involve a learning curve. It's just like getting a brand new computer that you have never used before. Well, I wouldn't go that far, because I did find, as I had stated, I did find a number of the programs uh, that a number of the programs were straightforward and easy to figure out just going through the file menus and you know looking at things and I, you know I got to a point where I could actually figure this stuff out so my transition to Linux was fairly simple but also I had the benefit of a number of broadcasters here on YouTube as well as the support of the Linux community on Ubuntu's forums, on Linux Mint's forums, on uh, Zorin's forums. Um, I really dug around quite a bit to find the answers that I was after and the Linux community was gracious enough to share this information with me. Another option, another reason why you would want to dual boot your computer is maybe you have some video games that you enjoy playing and we know that playing video games, Windows games, and Linux within Wine is hit or miss. You never know if you're going to get them to work. However, I was able to get 95% of my favorite Windows applications actually running natively in Linux using Wine and Vineyard. If you want more information on that, check out my tutorial. Uh, on my channel, I, I take you through the process of installing your Windows applications in Wine. But we also have other software as well. Uh, Wine is a wonderful project though. Uh, there is a there is there is a, a team called Code Weavers. Here it is. 
and coat weavers actually actually at actually contributes code to the wine project now I purchased a license for the code weaver software and I have actually found that vineyard handles uh, handles everything but I'm going to continue supporting this project here namely because they are doing such a wonderful job for the wine community and I am able to get most of my programs running now since I play older games another option that I use is virtualization and you can see I have a little arcade machine up here I can click this and I can run Windows XP from within my system and I can and it does a pretty nice job of doing uh, 3D graphics for older games but if you're looking for the latest and greatest games check out play on Linux you can download this program and it will run a lot of newer games that are out there surprisingly I haven't given it a chance to test it because I haven't really been much into playing games since I got into broadcasting and uh, and exploring this avenue but every now and then I'll take a day off and I'll curl up to a favorite game and as you can see I have a number of games installed here and all of these work flawlessly within a virtual machine let me go ahead and close this so definitely take the time to consider uh, to consider different options definitely dual boot <coughs> excuse me definitely work on a dual booting machine so that you can compare the two compare Windows with with Linux or Mac with Linux now I don't know if Mac will allow dual booting though uh, it's my understanding that Mac may require a uh, require an actual hard drive to itself but I do know that uh, Linux can coexist with Windows Windows is a great operating system don't get me wrong and I've used it for many years but it just fell short of my expectations and and I really don't care for the direction that Microsoft is headed now and now that I've seen how well Linux has matured and that it exceeds my expectations on a number of levels for me to you for me not to use it would really um, you know for me not using this uh, you know, um, I wouldn't be having as good of a computing experience as I have today. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, fill them out in the form below. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Also, please feel free to sort through uh, a number of selections that I have on my channel. I'm growing, I have more and more videos that are going up every day because. I feel this is important that I should share this with the community. This is my contribution to the community for what I have freely received. This is a wonderful operating system and I, I just can't complain. I, I don't have any complaints with this. I'm always learning new things every day and you know and when I do run across a little problem you know here or there you know, I get a great sense of accomplishment and relief when I'm able to, you know, find the answer and fix that problem myself. So it's, this is a, you know, Linux is a wonderful operating system if you're really willing to put the effort into it. But like I said, you can also have the best of both worlds. Thanks for watching.